what we do. Here's my one PowerPoint slide, guys. Here it is. So I'm going to talk to you more with uh, examples. Um, BIM, Building Information Modeling. For hundreds of years, architects drew a 2D on a piece of paper. And Trace, who knows, who doesn't know what BIM is? Who, this is your first time to BIM. Who, who feels like they're kind of a novice with BIM? A couple more nods. Okay, so I'll, I'll start from the ground, I'll go quickly up. Um, so we always built with 2D um, on a piece of paper. And it was acceptable because you could take a, a 2D um, electrical schematical drawing, and you could take a 2D um, plumbing, and you could look at the two of them and see how they kind of compare and contrast, right? And how they laid together. And sometimes an architect would, would draw them both together, and you could see what was going on in on a floor and a wall and a, and a ceiling, etc. Um, building information modeling is building in the three, four, and five D dimensions. 3D width, depth, and height. You know, 3D you can spin things around. This can is in 3D, right? The fourth dimension is incorporating time or a schedule into this building. So I build this building in 3D. And what's the first thing you need to build when you're building a building? You need to demolish or demolition. Right? So you put that on your schedule. There's nothing happening yet on your building because you're demolishing everything. What's the next thing that you need to do? Foundation, right? So your first schedule, your fourth dimension is, let's dig a hole. Right? Let's, let's show this now cavity in the earth. And what's the next thing that you need to do? You start putting steel and cement in the ground, right? So along comes the first month and you demolish and you build a hole. The second month you put your steel, your footers, your foundation. And you start building concrete, putting concrete. Well, your fourth dimension says when the steel should show up, when the concrete should start being poured, when piping and plumbing should start coming into effect, when electrical needs to come into the building. It's the fourth dimension is giving you, as you're building this building up, when windows need to show up, when drywall needs to come on site, when HVAC, when all these different trays need to show up for each floor in a building. Okay, so you're building the building 3D with a time element. What's the fifth dimension? Cost. I can now, using BIM, build a building in 3D, know when things need to show up, and know how to incorporate cost into it. So when I get to the fifth floor, what am I doing on the first floor? What am I preparing for for the sixth floor? What should I be doing on the fourth, fifth floor? When should the elevators be coming in? When should the, the next round of um, windows for the exterior show up? Who's on that? What's the cost for doing that? When do I have to release POs? All that's the fifth dimension of building information modeling. I have a BIM Bible. I, I, I share this with a lot of people. And I will not give you hard copies because we're not a printing company anymore. Just kidding. I could sell you pro copies, but I won't. Um, this is a great, this is the BIM Bible. It's put out by um, McGraw-Hill. It's a couple years old, but it's fantastic. I'll send you a link, download it, and read it. It tells you what BIM is. It's fantastic. It's the Bible of BIM. Okay, ever want to know anything about the basics of BIM? Download this, read it. It's 40 pages, some other. I'll share that with you. It's a great resource. Five fallacies of BIM. It's so about a five or six page. I'll email this one to you. This one I can't email you to. It's copywritten, but for some reason there's a download available. <laughs> this is put out by Autodesk. It's free. So I'll send you this one. Five fallacies. Nice little bathroom. Reading. Project delivery methods. Design, bid, build. Design, build. IPD. This is the latest fad. It's starting to come into the, the scene. Um, a lot of big institutions are starting to incorporate this. It can save a lot of money. If you don't know what it is, there's a little five or six or ten page article on it. Okay. IPD, Integrated Project Delivery. Autodesk put out sorry, Sustainable Design with, IP, with uh, BIM. This is kind of a hefty one. It's a boring read, frankly, but it's worthy. You want to know what they're talking about and how and the basics to get you started a BIM glossary of words, definitions, terms, acronyms start with this okay. um, I'm not going to show them, I meant to mention that but what is as-built, what is um, BPM, what is closeout, how do all these, you know 
see them at risk in a definition collision reports, clash and collisions. This will get you started. Okay, nice little resource. Okay, so there's some nice hard copy stuff. How much time do I got? <laughs> um, good. Let's talk about software. Um, the, the most common software program to build a 3D, 4D, 5D structure is Autodesk's Revit. Some people call it Rivet. <laughs> so uh, Autodesk Revit is the most popular. It's, um, it's used by all the architects on anything private and commercial. Um, most government jobs, most of the highway jobs, most of the uh, federal building jobs are on Bentley. So if you design, do anything with the Army Corps of Engineers, you got to have their product, Bentley. All of that federal work is starting to get transitioned over to Autodesk Revit because it's becoming the standard platform. It's the most popular. Okay. It's very expensive. I don't recommend anybody in this room go and buy it and try to get to know it. You have to be an architect. But for years, we've the design community has used AutoCAD. Okay, it's being replaced by Revit. Okay, Navis works, um, Celebri. These are both Autodesk products. But this is the really cool part. So you design and you build your building in 3D using AutoCAD Revit. Then you go out and all these subcontractors are out there building their, mo their disciplines or their trades in Revit, and, or they're having them built by someone in Revit. And they all come together and they smush it all together, all these different disciplines, the electrical, the MEP, the, the um, structural, the every, all these different pieces. You squish them all together and Navisworks. And Navisworks tells you where there's collisions, where the HVAC pipe hits the fire protection, or where the plumbing and the structural just is a big mess, right? You get the spaghetti web, it all comes together and you can visually see it, and I'll show you in a second, how Navisworks is really cool. It, it, it tells you, highlights where everything collides. It'll also show you where two beams come together and collide, and that's an acceptable collision, right? You just ignore those ones because you want those two beams to touch each other and be welded together and connected. But it highlights all these different problems throughout your drawing, your building, and allows you all to go in and talk about it as a team, identify the collisions that are need to be reworked, and get that done before you have to do it on site where it could cost a lot of money and change orders start coming into place. The whole goal of Revit or a mop BIM is to eliminate every change order. Is that possible? No, but if you can reduce them by a certain percentage, there's a huge return on investment. Questions so far? Okay. Either I'm talking too fast above your heads or you guys are loving it. <laughs> um, there's also something called AutoCAD 3D. This was the precursor to Autodesk Revit, so just be aware that that's out there. Um, then there's this really cool free product called Autodesk Design Review, right on their homepage. Right here is a free download for Autodesk Design Review. Okay. We talked about PDF earlier. There's a product called Adobe PDF Viewer or Reader. It's free. Everybody has it on their PC. It allows you to open up any PDF, right? This allows you to open up any what's called a DWF file. Okay, so in the world of Microsoft Word, what's the extension for Word? Dot DOC. DOCX. What's it? What's the extension for Excel? XLS or SLX. <laughs> what's the extension for PDF? Yeah. So in the world of 3D modeling, here's a couple of extensions. Dot RVT Revit file. You'll never see one unless you buy Revit. You'll never be able to open it. Navisworks has a couple of different ones. If I send you a 3D model, I can really only send it to you, all my subcontractor community, as a DWF, Digital Web Format. Okay, Don't worry about that. DWF is what you'll receive from me. If I'm an architect, I'm going to create a Revit model in Revit, and I'm going to give it to you as a DWF. 
It's the only way you can view what I just designed unless you own Revit, which is fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars per seat. Okay? So everybody publishes it and just shares these models, these 3D models, as a DWF file. There's a free viewer called the Design Review on AutoCAD's website. Does that make sense? First thing you do, AutoCAD.com, just download and install that. Then anybody that sends you a 3D model as that file format, you can open it. Okay, here's, here's what I'm going to cruise. I'm going to go fast because I'm running out of time. Um, what do owners want? Why do they need it, etc.? Check this out. This is the Cleveland Clinic, Twinsburg Medical Campus. Pretty big building. You guys are familiar with it? Yeah. This is in their specs. Here's a whole eight page document on what you, as a subcontractor, would need to provide in a model format. We can do <laughs> we can do third party modeling for you. So you bring to us your trade documents. Here's my shop drawings. Here's what I want to do. I have to provide this to Donnelly's or Panzeca or Turner Construction as a model, 3D model piece, because they that's what all these requirements say. Can you guys build this for me? Yes, we can help you build that. Third party model. This is Autodesk's design review. This is a model. I'm going to move slowly because my laptop is not powerful enough to really handle all this good stuff. I'm spinning this model around in 3D. See that? I'm going to zoom in on it now. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. Spin this thing a little bit more. This is all a DWF, a 3D DWF file. Because I have that viewer, I can view this. Right? Oh, there's a good quiz right there. Check this out. Give my little hand here. Get rid of this. There's a big old pipe. And what's that going right through the middle of it? Let's see if I can get a better, Let's see if I can get a better angle on that. Excuse my laptop here. It's kind of. You see what I'm looking at? Mm -hmm. I can see, and again, on a much more powerful system than my laptop here, um, you can really get inside of this drawing oops, and analyze. You can talk about this. Okay, who's moving? Contractors in the same room. Guys, we got this going down here. We got this guy's model coming in here. You built one model. You built the other one. We smushed them together, and this is a conflict we need to talk about. How are we going to get around this? Because it happens not here, but there, 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 all the way down this. That's an HVAC pipe, right? All the way down there. That's excellent. I like that. That's pretty. Now, that's a pretty simple one, I would imagine. <laughs> Work around. Now, throw a hospital in this, in this scenario here where you have oxygen lines and nitrogen lines and electrical yeah, I was lines. Just and, say, this depends on what. Yeah. You'll never see a warehouse modeled, it's not worth the cost. You'll never see a um, distribution center because it's very open, it's easy. You can see everything. There's plenty of room for everybody to move around up top. Once you get into a building structure, though, where you have occupancy or anybody walk around in ceilings, what happens, you guys all know this, what happens underneath these ceiling tiles and in this floor, it's amazing how you get it all in there. You only have so much space. There's a recent clinic project before it was modeled where everybody came together, they started building this, and all of a sudden they found out that, oh shoot, there's just not enough space in the roof. We gotta drop the ceiling six inches to make room for everybody. Wouldn't that have been nice to know up front? <laughs> this is a questionnaire for the Cleveland Clinic. If you're a sub, you had to fill this out to prove that you know how to use BIM or that you're gonna be using it. Okay? What is your current modeling authoring software platform, i.e. Revit, MEP 2011, um, Revit Architecture, etc.? Well, these guys were going to model, this sub was going to model Autodesk Revit 2011 and 2012. And they have the ability to do it with all of these. So if they use you, they put what? They would put Revit, um, Autodesk Revit. 
We would actually help you fill this out. I was going to say. How would they know the answer to your question? Yeah. We, would, we would help you fill this out. Um, what um, model review software or version are you familiar with or, or currently using? Well, we would use Navisworks. Right? Or there's a product called Celebri, et cetera, et cetera. And here's all the different questionnaire that you have to fill out. It's not a hard one. Prove to give us some projects you've worked on, right? So they really want proof of history. If you can't, you got to go with someone who has a third-party model. Right? Okay, so I gave you a lot of information on where to get more intel on modeling and 3D modeling. Um, I showed you a 3D model. Um, talked about what the clinic does. This is just what the clinic does. A lot of other big owners are doing this. Um, I gave you a glossary. And I don't want to take much more time. I think that's a bit over here. But I'm happy to answer any questions.